Okay, this is our basic sizing spreadsheet. It's the most important part of how we start to trade. This is your wages per day that you make at your job. Just type in the, the monthly amount that you make and it'll fill it in. This is your account type, whether it's a mini or a standard. You change this to standard. This is um, the input, the starting value of your account, which is 2500 That's the euro. That's the symbol you're going to trade. That is the current value of the euro. This is the margin on the account that's required. This is your distance of stop. You put that in. We'll cover that in a different video. You cover in the ATR of the euro that you're going to be trading, the daily ATR. You put in the risk on your account, 1% or 7%. 1% um, one, 1 to 7 losses in a row. This is how many losses in a row. Liars is a term that Neil came up with. It's losses in a row. Um, now, what we do is you determine you're going to lose 7 times in a row, 1%. Well, this is what we do after we lose. All right, after we lose, we're going to put in 1.18, 1.18. Well, what that means, we increased our target from 18 pips that we put here. That's our stop at 18 pips. We increased it by 18%. Well, that's fine until it gets down to this red number. That red number means that we exceeded the ATR of the day and that it's not possible to make that trade. So this is showing you adjustments to your target. Now, this is showing you adjustments to your lots. Well, if I increase my lots from 0.5 to 0.8 to 0.13 to 0.21, it's going to affect us in a certain way, and we'll see how. And this is after one loss in a row, two loss in a row, three loss in a row, four loss in a row. We're not doing anything to our stops right now. This is your number of losses in a row. This is how much it affects your monthly income. Um, one being um, right here, if you come in and you say, well, right now, I'm down 16% um, of my daily wage, but I'm not even down 1% of my monthly income. So this is percent of your daily wage. This is the margin that's required to take the trade. Red means you can't take it. You don't have a margin. This is the dollar value per tick. That's $0.05. Cents. Our loss of stop is $0.93, cents, $0.93, cents, $0.93. Cents. This is our cumulative loss. This is our gross profit and our net profit. Green means we exceeded our risk. Our profit has exceeded our risk. This is the risk we said we would take it one day. That's 1% of our account. And down here, this is, if we come down here, let's go over. Now, this is kind of for the advanced users. Our original stop was 18. We only need, or our target was 18. We only need 11 pips to break even. We only need 18 pips to break even. Or 52% of our volatility assessment is needed to break even. Now, this is our lot size. Our lot size right here is 0.05. Well, we need only need 0.04 going for the full 18 pips to break even. Okay. And so... This and this is dollars per tick, so that we'd only need forty cents per tick. This is one lot. This is going to be one lot, uh, or one. Um, this is the num. If you look at this right here, uh, you take this. It's um, first trade, second trade, third trade, fourth trade. One, two, three, four. Well, we don't need that much size to try to break even. We only need like. Um, 71% of that to break even or this would be 73% of what we need to break even so it's telling you the size of your lots that you need to go to break even okay and this goes through and calculates out the the lots that you would need and it rounds it up it, it rounds it up as it goes to grab it and tells you um, how much you need so this would take the dollar amount and this is the, the dollar amount per tick that you're going to, per pip. This is your loss on your overall account is um, a percent of your account. This is um, loss on account is percent of account. And I probably should change these to percents just like the other one so it doesn't get confusing. Let's just format that and we'll just make those percents. Now we left this open source. Change at your own risk. You can make it better if you find better ways to do things. We're all ears about hearing. Um, 
you know so if you find a way that you like this is percent losses on your account now this down here this is the Australian dollar this is the GBP AUD this is the bid and ask of it this is the spread of it now this low volatility to high volatility gives us a range that we want to come in here and we can actually look at some of this stuff all right and what this does is this tells us see if you that's why you got to be careful it's open source see if you grab that you, you do not want this to be changed because unless you really know what you're doing you're going to be in trouble but for the advanced users we've left this open source so you can go look at it and and figure out which what you want to do so this would be a four right here and what this is doing it's looking up on a different um, spreadsheet it's saying well how far does this thing move and if we took in well this one's fine the euro USD this is the Australian bank open up to here this is the euro bank open up to here and this is the United States bank open now what does that mean if you take the lowest um, the lowest movement per day and we bring this in see that green bar right there and we say well that moves four pips well we're willing to trade only when it'll move three times our cost otherwise we won't trade well our cost is two pips on the euro it better be moving at least six pips a day or six pips an hour that's what this is telling you if it doesn't move six pips an hour we don't want to trade it okay so right here this is moving nine pips per hour those green bars those up swing in volatility where it went from four pips up to nine that's it builds into the um, Australian bank opens now this 4 a.m. one if you took this and we made this red this would be the European bank opens and this is the what's called the upslope in volatility during the European bank opens now why is that important because when we go to trade some models require that we must know when the volatility is increasing well that's when it increases during the euro bank open now this is the United States banking session and this will show you which ones are going to increase during the United States banking session and it's how much volatility is climbing during that well there's multiple there's a plethora of reasons to do this if you come back here and you look at this where it said Australian banks and I'm gonna trade from maybe 2200 to 1 in the morning this is the lowest volatility this is the highest that's the difference and we divide that by the spread and this will give us the very best symbols to trade at that time of day the ones that have more movement than um, anything else okay this is true for the euro bank um, session it does the same thing this is the bid this is the ask this is the spread this is the lowest volatility at 4 a.m. this is the highest volatility during that session that's the difference on an hourly chart you divide that and it gives you a ratio now this is both the euro bank and the United States banking open and this is the US bank this gives you this session that you're gonna look at now this is a histogram of that volatility this is each one of those represents a different time well if you want to see what the volatility is on a different symbol you would type in AUD CAD Aussie CAD that pops up and that's the volatility on the Aussie CAD so this sizing spreadsheet is used to determine um, volatility and to determine um, let's rename this right here where it says black bourbon let's just name this part down here just size sheet okay what this does is this tells you what happens if you behave this way after losses in a row this is some things that we put in to configure your system now we'll cover that next how do we configure the system okay so that's a, a brief two-minute overview of what this does.